Hello, and welcome to Great.com Talks With. Today, we're talking with Anna Rodriguez, Community Outreach and Humane Education Coordinator at Citizens for Animal Protection, an organization caring for pets in need through sheltering, adoption, education, low-cost wellness, and community outreach. And if you're new to our podcast, please press subscribe button either on YouTube or your podcast app, because today we're going to learn about an organization that advocates respect and compassion for animal life and provides humane education to help prevent cruelty to animals. Hello, Anna. Welcome to Great.com Talks. We're excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. How would you describe citizens for animal protection for someone who is not familiar with your work? Citizens for Animal Protection, also known as CAP, so we have a little nickname, CAP, is a Houston area nonprofit that uh, wants to help um, companion animals. We want to prevent and end suffering of animals. Um, so we uh, give homeless animals a chance to get their forever family. And I also like to say we give people the chance to find their new best friend. So um, as a pet lover myself, I definitely can say my, my pet is uh, definitely very close to me. And I think most pet lovers would say that. 70% of families have a pet. So it's a common, uh, common practice. Um, but uh, we also help pets stay healthy. We help them through our wellness clinic. So even people who already have a pet, uh, pets that have a home, we want them to stay in their home. So we provide services to help with that. We also educate the public um, and provide opportunities for the public to help animals themselves. So we want to turn that feeling that you have about animals, that good feeling, we hope, and turn it into action and give you opportunities, whether it is to be a volunteer um, with your time, perhaps you come in and walk dogs, or maybe um, to promote the shelter, promote adoption, maybe participate in a fundraising event, maybe you donate money, maybe you donate time, um, maybe you become a foster family and help animals who come here um, recover. Sometimes some of the animals need a little uh, TLC. They need that veterinary care. Not everybody comes in 100%. So uh, we want to give those opportunities to people to make a difference in animals' lives. So that's mm. a little bit about what we do. Mm. Yeah, your organization covers um, several areas when it comes to animal protection and animal um, raising awareness about animal um, rights. So it's wonderful to see that um, how you described you help animals to uh, get a home as well as for families uh, to get a new family member. So it's a great um, both win-win situations for families who decide to adopt and for animals who need um, human care. So it's wonderful to see that you guys are working in that direction. Um, you talked um, about adoption services that um, your uh, organization provides and helps um, the, uh, for animals to get homes. Could you please describe this program in detail? How, and um, maybe you can share some recent stories uh, of uh, particular animals being uh, adopted and how the, family, the lives of family members changed. Uh, well, right now, one of our um, starting points uh, is to look online. It's actually open 24 hours a day. You can go to our website at catforpets.org, and we ask families to check out the animals online. You can see all of their pictures. You can see profiles, uh, but you can also see recommendations about pet care. We want you to really discuss it amongst your family members. We want you to be prepared um, and we want you to um, understand the commitment that you're making. Um, sometimes uh, it's very exciting to think I want to get a kitten or a puppy, but we need you to understand that you're getting a cat or a dog. That puppy will not stay a puppy and that kitten will not stay a kitten. So our adoption services are really about matching the family to an animal that really suits them, a pet that is going to be able to stay with them. You know, the animals that we have have already uh, lost a home once. And so we are wanting to make a significant effort to make sure it doesn't happen again. And the best way to do that is actually through our application and um, 
I know some people think that's a little scary in application and are you going to turn me down? It's really not about turning you down. It's about finding out what you are expecting and what you're prepared for. And um, it's a conversation. So we start with that application because it gives us a starting point for those questions we might have for you about a particular pet. Once you find a pet that you like um, or are slightly interested in, we have you come in. We want you to look around and actually meet the animals. Um, we want you to have that moment. And you can even bring your own dog here. For instance, if you have a dog, you can come here with your dog and meet a pet that you're interested in, another dog perhaps. We have a really lovely backyard area where we walk our dogs and it allows us to have that meet and greet between the pets. So that's kind of fun to see um, because we want it to work out, you know, so we really want it to be a good match. So pet adoption is a little bit more than you coming in and putting your name on a certificate and handing over $20. We want you to actually find the pet that's right for you and make sure that it's going to, to stick. Now, it doesn't always work out. We're happy if, that, if we need to make a change. We're going to welcome any animal that has been in our shelter back. We want them back. We're going to take care of them and we're going to get them the right fit. But we find that through that application process that it does usually work out. The success rate is much higher. So that really gives us a lot of joy. You asked about a specific case, and I will say we had a wonderful dog uh, named Lola who came in. Uh, and her story is a little bit longer, but she, a uh, five-year-old uh, terrier who had puppies in terrible condition, found abandoned, uh, puppies in tow, a person just like you, just like someone who's watching this video brought her in. We got those puppies, uh, a little TLC and adopted right away. But Lola, that's what we named the terrier. Lola needed a lot of care. She had ear infections. She had eye infections. She had multiple internal parasites. She had broken and worn down teeth. Um, you know, so it was really a process to take care of her. Her skin needed a lot of healing, but the dog herself was extremely patient um, and really just happy. She was happy to be receiving the help that she got. So she was put into a foster care program, several months of TLC, lots of vet visits. Uh, we got her healthy, we got her skin cleared up, got those ears cleared up, got those eyes cleared up. A lot of these conditions could have been minor, but in her case, they were exacerbated to the full uh, highest level that you could have. And I just felt so bad for her. But now I can say, not only did she go through that whole process and come out healthier and still happy, such an optimistic little dog, she turned around and was adopted here. It took about a month and a half of her being here in the shelter. Um, but I have to say her foster had really built up her confidence and she was showing love to everyone. And eventually she found the right person for her. And I have to say, we know that it works because we have those families still contacting us, still sending us photos, still letting us know uh, about the what's going on with their new family member. We just love seeing those pictures. So um, that's what pet adoption does. It makes families, mm -hmm. you know, it makes families. And the story isn't always uh, short. Sometimes it's complicated like Lola's. But we get through it, we get through it together, and I'm always amazed at the optimism and resilience um, that a dog can have after being abandoned and uh, left. She still was excited to meet people, still had optimism. I can't imagine having ear infections for months and eye infections and how grumpy I might have been feeling. And yet she took it all in stride. So I just, I love a success story. And what's great about being here at CAP is you get to hear those success stories with every adoption. So I love it.
Indeed. The fact that um, you make sure that families are ready uh, for um, adoption, it's not just excitement that comes with getting a puppy, but it's a long-term commitment. And you explain to them that it's a long-term commitment and um, they fully realize and are ready before adopting um, through um, your organization. And it helps, as you mentioned, um, the success stories, the success story of Lola, such a heartwarming and heartbreaking story at the same time is an indicator that when people fully realize the extent of commitment and the extent of the joy as well that it can bring um, to their lives and to their families, uh, it will be a bo- um, um, beautiful addition, as you mentioned, um, to the existing family. Um, your organization also runs um, a Cornelius cleaning uh, clinic uh, where you help Um, uh, animals uh, who are struggling um, with uh, health issues. Could you please describe the work that Cornelius Clinic does? So our Cornelius Clinic um, is a wellness and vaccination clinic, and it offers low-cost vaccinations and wellness to people um, on purpose. I know that sounds a little funny, but We keep it low cost on purpose so that people can afford to keep their pets. We also occasionally have uh, drives to raise money so that we can turn around and offer people who can't afford it um, things like spay and neuter surgeries at no cost to them. So we do that once or twice a year. We also offer through our clinic um, feral cat services. So we have people who see community cats or feral cats and want to help them. Our clinic does the spay and neuter surgeries for those people wanting to help. Um, it's, a, it's a small fee for, in that case, but again, it's so low. We keep everything as low as possible. And frankly, we negotiate uh, to get the prices even lower. We have a very tenacious accounting department that is hard to say no to. And wonderful uh, companies who provide those um, pharmaceuticals and uh, surgical items that we need um, have often given us a break so that we can turn around and offer that lower price to the people who are coming in. Of course, We'd love a donation. Your donation will definitely help. But we want to make sure that if you have a desire to keep your pet healthy, we want to make sure we give you an avenue that you can afford. And so um, that can avoid a lot of heartache because often when people bring in a pet, part of the issue is that they simply can't afford it. And maybe they have let that pet um, suffer, maybe not per, you know, on purpose, but they've realized to a certain extent that they're not meeting its needs. And so a dog might end up with heartworms and then they realize they don't know how to treat it. Um, when, if they had prevented it for as little as five to $6 a month, that's what we can sell you a heartworm pill for. And so we want to make sure our vet exams and our treatments are affordable, accessible to people who need them. And we want to give that opportunity to people. I know they want it too, because when we had our last uh, sign up for spay and neuter surgeries at no cost, uh, we had hundreds of people show up and sign up uh, because they knew that they wanted to do the right thing. They just didn't have the funds for it. And I'm so glad to see those people because they love their pets too. And their pets love them. Your pet doesn't love you because you have millions of dollars. Your pet loves you for who you are. And so we want to make sure that we address those people. We give them the chance to do the right thing because if they're able to keep their pet healthy and happy, then they're going to keep their pet in their home and off the streets and not in the shelter. So we want to do that as much as we can. And uh, I love our clinic. I love that it's it's um, serving the community and um, making a difference. And I love the volunteers who are there. Um, and uh, even, the, even the veterinarians, they do so much. Um, they see so many animals. I, I just, I can't believe what a great job they do. So 
I love okay. it. Cornelius Cleaning is serving the community based on uh, what you had described, and it's providing, yeah. me, me, uh, it's making um, pet caring more affordable. And for people who struggle, who might struggle financially, you are there for them to support and uh, to make um, sure that. Uh, taking care of can, uh, animals is not uh, of an expensive cost for them and they can keep their uh, pets and continue living happily uh, with them after. So it's wonderful to see that you make it accessible and you're also helping them. And what having uh, hun- hundreds of people sign up. Uh, oh, more than hundreds, 4,000, yeah. over 4,000 people used the Cornelius Clinic last year to help meet their animals needs. So I love that. I love that. Um, so Absolutely. We are making yeah. effort. It indicates that it's uh, it's fulfilling its purpose of serving community. So I applaud um, you and everyone who is working at Cornelius Cleaning. Uh, we talked uh, briefly about how uh, Lola went through the fo- foster care uh, foster program and how um, foster program helped uh, her to boost the confidence. But uh, could you please describe the foster uh, program more in detail? Uh, what kind of animals are in need of foster care program and how it can help them um, to go through. I would love to tell you about it. Yes, the foster care program is probably, um, I would say, almost at the heart of what we do. Mm -hmm. Because, as I said, many of the animals who are brought to us, perhaps a person like you found a cat in their yard or um, a dog in a, uh, in a in a water runoff area or something like that. That's what happened to me. I found a little dog in basically a, a, a trench and you pull it out and you come over here and you don't know what to do. And you come to the, to the shelter and you ask for help. You know, you want to help this little animal. So people like that come every day and we see that little puppy or that cat and we realize, okay, this animal is going to need some extra treatment, much like Lola, the terrier who came in who had puppies. And so families who have signed up and uh, done a bit of training, they become foster families. They are able to access actually through a private Facebook group a list that we call the needies list and we profile animals that have come in and their diagnosis, their temperament, their size, the length of time that we think their treatment is going to take. And people are able to simply check that list and see if there's someone there they can help. So if they have a particular love for kittens, maybe, or our bottle babies, that's what we call them, they can simply click on it and respond and say, I can take that group of kittens, or I can take that terrier Lola, or I can take that uh, little puppy that was brought in. And often um, the treatments are simple, but they might... Uh, They're not able to be done here in the shelter, especially in the case of young kittens who need to be fed several hours, every several hours. We can't do that here. We all are going to pack in and leave at 7, 8 o'clock at night. Those kittens are going to need care throughout the night. So those families make a huge difference. They also make sure that the animals get their veterinary appointments, which we still provide. And the Facebook group, what I love the best about it, is that you can always post a question and other fosters or our own staff will answer your questions. You can make appointments, you can get advice. Maybe one of your kittens is not eating as much and maybe another foster who has a lot more experience or a mentor because we do have foster mentors um, gives you the advice that maybe you need to try Uh, a particular brand or maybe uh, a particular technique. So I love that everybody's able to help each other with their um, questions as well as the staff. And and, um, so it's a great resource. You're not assigned an animal. You, You pick, you choose, you see the amount of time the animal might need your care. And so that way you can sort of say, okay, We can take care of kittens for a month. We can do that. And I've done it in my own house. It's a great experience. Um, I love doing it, but it it does involve a little bit of heartbreak because you do have to bring the pet back. (laughs) 
<laughs> and you have to let them get adopted by somebody. And sometimes you decide to keep them. We call that a foster failure. And it does happen. But I like to remind people that um, as much heartbreak as I have uh, bringing puppies back into the shelter, uh, when I see them get adopted, I'm so happy. And if I don't let them go, then I don't have room in my house to take someone else. Mm -hmm. So I, I do love the foster program. I have fostered guinea pigs and rabbits and kittens and puppies. Um, and I, I love every bit of it it is extra work you are cleaning up a lot so you definitely want to be prepared for it but it is something that not just myself but my entire family has really enjoyed um i have had nieces and nephews who visited for the summer who really loved that we had little kittens to take care of for a, a month or two and uh, everybody participates so i i love it it's very uh, people driven because we could not foster um, without people who said they were willing to do it, take an animal into their home and give them whatever medication at how many times a day that they've been prescribed. Um, it does not work without volunteers. So it is a completely 100% volunteer driven effort. And the fact that we're able to do it is just amazing. Um, last year, we had over 50,000 hours logged in from people who took in foster pets. That is a lot of time donated. Uh, 50,000 hours is just amazing. So I love the foster program. Love yeah, it. I can see your love and passion for this uh, program. And the fact that volunteers are taking um, animals, uh, young animals who are in need of um care and they are doing it voluntarily and making a difference in the lives of those animals because it can be a matter of life or death and by them taking care several hours a day in the nights they are making a difference and for the um, preparing um, the animals for them to be adopted in the future so it's indeed um, a life-changing experience both for volunteers as well as animals who are involved in the foster care program. If someone would like to support Citizens for Animal Protection, how can they do that? I think the first place to start is online at catforpets.org, C-A-P, the number four, uh, P-E-T-S dot O-R-G. Um, check us out. Check us out for yourself. There are a couple of big buttons there that say things like adopt and donate and volunteer. Check them out. You can also scroll down and see options for kids. Kids love to volunteer too. So we have a little cap for kids tab. It's a great place to start. Um, whether you donate money or time or efforts, whether you participate in things like our adoption events or simply become an adopter, um, you are the difference. That is the only way it works. We do not um, have are any success without the help and support of people in the community. And I, I want to say before I go that I just want to, I don't know how to say this really, but in the strongest way possible, I want to encourage people to reach out outside of their circle within their own community and learn what you can do to make a difference. Um, that's what I think that makes CAP so strong. I think Citizens for Animal Protection is strong because people have uh, made the effort to make it work, to find a way to make a difference. And it's a great feeling to know you can make a difference in your community, not just for animals. Um, you know, sometimes people think, oh, it's an animal charity, but I, I want to help kids, you know, or I want to help people. Um, None of the animals who come to the shelter walk in by themselves. It's a person who walked in with an animal and asked us for help. It's a person who's going to adopt a pet. It's a person who's going to foster. It's a person who's going to take their pet to the clinic because they care. And I think that that is just amazing. And I don't know how uh, to really emphasize it strongly enough that it is people who are making a difference for these animals, but also for their community at large. What an example to show your kids and your family 
that reaching out and caring and making a difference, um, you know, not just saying I feel something, oh, an animal's cute. No, I'm motivated to action. Um, that's what makes the difference. That's when you make the world a better place. So I would say check us out online. Think about what you can do in your home, in your community, for someone else that can help make the world better, enrich your own life. I, I almost think that participating in something like um, what I do is almost kind of selfish because it does so much for me. My heart is so full and I'm not the only one. I'm in a building full of people whose heart is full because they have made a difference for their community, um, for animals, but also the people who love them. So Absolutely. Um, the link to the catpads.org uh, will be provided in the description. So you viewing and listening can go to the website and learn about all the initiatives Anna and the team at uh, CAP are doing and familiarize yourself and learn how you can make a difference in the life of animals. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, it was wonderful to get to know <laughs> you. you. Great day. It's Thank a great you. at CAP. For you, if you enjoyed this conversation, please press like and share button because this will show the YouTube and podcast algorithm that this conversation is important, that we need to take care of animals and protect them. And it can make a huge difference in their lives as well as in our lives. Thank you and see you in the next episode.